morning guys it's tuesday night for us wednesday morning for you guys you guys know what that means tomorrow is well tonight for you is bible study every single wednesday at seven o'clock we have a bible study and um i'm here in my office uh there's prayer going on right now and uh, i'm looking for my scripture that we're going to talk about today I got, uh, me and Sharon got blessed today. Um, I want to thank brother and sister Elizabeth and Ray. They got us English and Spanish translation Bibles. One side is English, the other, well, one side is Spanish, the other side is English. Um, it's the King James, and uh, this is the in the Spanish, uh, for Spanish services. We had our first Spanish service on Sunday. Um, and uh, I can believe it. I'm, I'm looking at the views and it's like neck and neck with the English. And that is crazy to me because, you know, it's taken me 12 years <laughs> to get the types of views I have, which I mean, it drops in a bucket compared to other YouTubers. But for being a, a two hour service, you know, we get usually four or five, 600 views every single Sunday. And the Spanish service is neck to neck with our first one. So that's pretty cool. But Sharon and I got matching Bibles. Um, so the Spanish is Reina Valera Gomez. Oh, it has a little book in it. Hi, babe. Sharon just walked in. And uh, so, huh? I know. I can hear it. We're having prayer right now, guys, and the prayer group is growing. Every single Tuesday, we have intercession prayer. 20-some uh, 20, 20 people in there. So it's uh, 6.30 to 8. Yeah, 6.30 to 8 every single Tuesday. Uh, but like I said, for you guys, it's Wednesday. Bible study every Wednesday at 7, but we start with prayer at 6.30. But yeah, man, what a blessing. They walked in for prayer, and they gave us these beautiful gifts, matching Bibles. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do uh, uh, <clears throat> the devotion off of this. It's pretty cool. Um, the English is King James, which is the old school one, but that's cool. That's the, when I first gave my life to the Lord, I, um, hold on, let me turn my ringer off. When I gave my life to the Lord in prison, uh, all I had was a King James Bible for, I want to say the first year. And um, so that's what I got used to, you know. And it's, it's, it's in that old English, but it's a classic, you know. And uh, I just thought, you know what, today we're going to do it. So guys, if you know a Spanish speaker, um, we, we started a YouTube channel in Spanish. Same thing. It's called House of Rest in Espanol. And um, right now it has 14 subscribers. And I am praying in the name of Jesus that it catches up to the English because the English were like a hundred short of 11,000. Well, I think we have 10,900 subscribers in English. I wish all 10,000 viewed, but either way, um, right now we have 14 subscribers in the Spanish channel. And uh, we ordered flyers, so we get those flyers in a few days. Full color, double-sided, same as the English ones. A little different, but basically uh, for Spanish speakers, uh, I'm really excited about it. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, I'm going to have fun here and attempt to read in Spanish. I'm going to do the English, then I'm going to do the Spanish. So we're going to go in uh, John chapter 1. And uh, right out the gate, chapter 1, verse 1. This is in my top three favorite books of the Bible. And um, check it out. Uh, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was a light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness 
comprehended it not. So verse 1 through 5. And again, I'm going to attempt this. Um, it says, uh, Evangelio uh, de Juan, capítulo 1. En el principio era el verbo, y el verbo era con Dios, y el verbo era Dios. Este era en el principio con Dios. Todas las cosas por él fueron, por él fueron hechas, y sin él nada de lo que ha sido hecho fue hecho. En él estaba la vida, y la vida era la luz de los hombres. Y la luz en las tinieblas resplandece, más las tinieblas no la com comprendieron. Okay, verse, that's one through five. Hey, not bad. So, what I want to talk about is this, it's crazy because it seems like outside of Christianity, I'm just like, there's no way people are that ignorant or in denial because people will say, whether it's Muslims, whether it's Jehovah Witness, whatever it is, will say nowhere in the Bible does it say that Jesus is God. And I'm just like, I, well, I understand the Jehovah Witness because their Bibles have been changed. I know, I know, Jehovah Witness are convinced that our Bibles are changed. But, I mean, it's a, it's a really easy, quick study to see what the original Greek says. It's not that hard. Um, but basically, look what it says, just in the chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, All right? So let's say the, I don't know, in the beginning, let's say this is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, right? So that's what confuses people. So it sounds like it's talking about two people, but this is interesting, right? Hi, are you by yourself? Oh. Huh? Oh, okay. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So it sounds like two different things, right? And then it says, and the Word was God. Hmm. I know that confuses people, but the Word is a Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And it says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So... I can almost say this. Let's imagine I can hold this water in the air. And I'm, let's say I'm holding a ball of water. Like, you know how you've seen um, like uh, astronauts, when they drink water, they'll, they'll pour water in a space shuttle, and then the water's like, whoo, just floating around. So imagine that ball, that, that ball of water floating around. And I said, in the beginning was the Word. So I'm pointing at the ball of water. And the Word was with God. And the word was God. So let's say I, I funneled that water and pushed it in here. So all of a sudden this water in this bottle, it's the same thing. So now it's it's in here. In the beginning was a word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the same was the be in the beginning with God. And all things, now it's talking about this as one. All things were made by him and without him. Now I'm pointing at the whole bottle and the fluid inside of it. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, and in him was life, right? This water, you will die without three days of water. I believe it's three days, or not too long after three days, you'll die. So technically, we can say water's life. It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. It doesn't understand it. So, I mean, 
when we come across people that are atheists, non-believers, they don't believe in, in, in what the Bible says, it's like, well, no wonder. It literally says it in verse 5 that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness doesn't even comprehend it. You can't even, you can't even comprehend or fathom what it is that chapter 1, verse 1 is even saying. There's another portion in the Bible that says, great is the mystery of godliness, that God was manifested in the flesh, that God somehow came in the flesh like this, that it's a mystery, you know, and, and I know that sometimes confuses people, but I'm not quite sure why, because it, it's like, you know that you can't read the word of God without the Holy Spirit of God. He will reveal all things to you. And sometimes when people overcomplicate things, I say it's because they're trying to read it through their flesh. They're trying to read it with their understanding and reasoning outside of God. And when you try to think outside of God, you can't comprehend God because the darkness cannot comprehend the light. You know, but but we see that here, guys, you know, and um and just to and just to drill it in even more, if we go down, look at this. Look at verse 14. Remember, it says that the word in the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, verse 14 says, and the word became flesh. So who became flesh? Jesus. The word became flesh. Who's the word? Let's go back to one. In the beginning was the word. So Jesus wasn't created. He has always existed. He has always been. The Son has always been. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He is God. And that Word, verse 14, was made flesh and dwelt among us. So this God, this invisible God, matter of fact, the Bible says, it says that, that the the word um, the word was made flesh. So basically, it, it, it's um, I can't remember what scripture it is, but it says that that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So you're not going to see three different thrones in heaven. You're not going to see two thrones in heaven. You're going to see one throne in heaven. That Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of, full of grace and truth. You know, another thing that a lot of times people say, well, Jesus was a great teacher and that's it. Or he was a great prophet. And I would say this, so if he was such a great teacher, by what crime was he put to death? What was so blasphemous about being a great teacher if Jesus, if Jesus supposedly never claimed to be God? You know why he was put to death, right? Because the Jewish rulers hated the fact that he proclaimed to be God which is grounds for execution. They killed him, not because he was a great teacher. They killed him because of the proclamation of who he said he was. And we have to always keep that in mind, guys. There's no way around it. The only way you can get around it is to be spiritually blind or to actually manipulate the scriptures to say something else. But all you got to do is go to the original Greek and see what it says. And, and it says in the beginning was the word. So whoever this word is, I better know who it is because that person is very important. Who is that person? Well, it says the word was with God. Okay, so he was with him. And the word was God. Not only was he with God, he was God and created all things. Somebody's at the door. Let's see. Oh, Sharon's opening it. So we have to keep that in mind 
when we read the word. That's why it's important that we pray before we read the scriptures. We have to know that or else we will not comprehend that. And, um, but yeah, guys, um, to be a Christian is to believe in the deity of Christ. You, you can't just get away with saying he's a great teacher. You can't just get away by saying he's just a, 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 he was a great rabbi. Because no great rabbi or no great teacher would ever proclaim to be God. If a rabbi or a teacher claimed to be God, that was blasphemy. That person would be a false teacher unless it was God. The things that Jesus taught don't allow him to be just a great teacher. Because if he wasn't who he said he was, then he would be the, the biggest liar of all. So you have to make a choice. You can't choose his middle ground. Well, I'm not saying he was a false teacher. I'm not saying he's God. I just think he's a great... No, 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 I'm sorry. It's going to be one or the other. He's either a lunatic or he's the master and creator of all things. There's no middle ground. And you got to solidify and anchor that down. And if he is God, which he is... What does that mean to those who reject him? Mm. You don't want to be in that position, my friend. That's not a good place to be. So, with that, guys, I'm going to let you guys go. I pray that you are blessed, that that this shares something with you. And I know for many of you, you're already Christians, you're already believers, you already solidified this in your soul, but you have no idea who else is watching this, who needs to hear this, who needs to be confirmed, who needs this confirmation, who needs to see it very clearly, who Jesus truly is. He's the Messiah, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. I'm gonna leave you with one more thing. If we go to the book of Isaiah, one more thing, guys, just to solidify it even more, let's, let's Let's close this up with a clear understanding of who it is that he is. Okay. Look at this. Isaiah 40, 45, verse 22. This is God speaking to Isaiah. And look what God says. He says, look unto me and be ye saved. In Spanish, mirad a, a mi y sed salvos. Who do we get salvation from? What does the Bible say to be saved? In whose name are we saved? Matter of fact, the book of Acts says that there is no other name in heaven or below in which one can be saved, except in the name of who? Jesus. Now listen to this. God says, Old Testament, this is in the Old Testament. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. So according to Isaiah, God is saying, it is through me you have salvation and there is nobody else you can be saved in. Do you see and realize what this scripture is saying? That if Jesus isn't this same God, then Jesus is the worst liar and the most lunatic of all. But he's not. This is him speaking. This is God speaking. It is truth that if you look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else there it is guys um we can keep going and going and going i don't know they're just a lot guys I, i'm gonna get stuck if we keep going on but anyways um 
Hopefully this gives you a little bit of something to look at. You really want to trip out? Read Isaiah 44, Isaiah 45, Isaiah 46. Um, and you tell me what you think. It's right there. Let me see, verse 8. Verse, cha here's one. Chapter 44, verse 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. In Spanish, así dice Jehová, el Rey de Israel, y su Redentor, Jehová de los ejércitos. Yo soy el primero, y yo soy el postrero, y, yo, y fuera de mí no hay Dios. He says, outside of me, there is no God. I'm the first and the last. Huh, that sounds interesting, right? Nobody would ever dare say that but God. Right? He says, I'm the first and the last. Interesting. Look in the book of Revelation. Look how... Look what Jesus says to the apostle John in the Revelation. Oops. Interesting. So, John, chap uh, the Revelation, Revelation, last book in the Bible. In chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Verse 8, Yo soy el alfa y la omega, el principio y el fin, dice el Señor, el que es y que era y que ha de venir, el todo poderoso. Jesus is saying I'm the first and the last. Matches Isaiah, don't it? Time to leave you with that one. All right, guys. God bless you. Thank you so much. And uh, see you next time.